got one because I know some of you like to set them. Always set Steph's there. She's got a watch going. Right. So last week we did a lot of leg work. Jen's got a back to a future cup going on. Um, so I was thinking today, if everybody got a spinner. Thumbs up. Yeah. I think we'll do some spins. Does that sound okay with everybody? Yeah. Right. Let's get warm though first because we don't want to be spinning nice and cold. So in your own time, just start by marching on the spot. Have a cat around my feet again. Try not to stand on her. What are you doing? Okay, take it to a jog. Just a light jog. Nice and gentle. My body's moving again. Lift them knees and kick your butt. Good. Shake your legs out. Let's do your shoulders. So let's roll your shoulders backwards. Out forwards. Good, lift them up and down, up, down. Good. Okay, let's rotate the arms. And forwards. Good. Let's try the alternate ones if we can. And the other way. Good. Stretch up. I use your cam. And then round your shoulders. Good. And then push your hands into your back. Push your tummies out on your chest. Good. Okay, let's twist or twist. Nice and gentle. Good. Double bounce to one side. And the other. Good, let's do side stretches. So over to the side, hold it there. And the other side. Good, then we're gonna go side, front, down to the toe, and the other way. Side, flat back front, down to the toe, and again. Side, front, down, and side, front, down. Good, let's do hip circles. Ah, uh, the other way. Good, now let's do figure of eight. And the other way. Mine turns in this time. <laughs> Looks like we're having a silent disco. Okay, let us do opening our hips. So lift the knee up, open it out to the side. Good. 
and then bring it in the other way. So open to the side and bring it forwards. Good. Let me just take my jumper off. Getting a bit closer. Okay, so let us do heel toe rock. So we're going to go up on the heels. Right, up on the toes, sorry. Back on the heels. Up on the toes, back on the heels. Good, walk around on your toes. Keep your legs quite straight. Just... Lift them heels as high as possible. And then on your heels. Duck walks as I call them. Okay, rotate these ankles. One way and then the other way. And then rotate the other one. And the other way. Good, shake out. We'll keep doing a little bit more warm up. Okay, let us do some forward leg kicks. If you just want to do one after the other, that's fine. Good. Good, now let's try sideways. Well done, guys. Good. Well done, guys. Good. Okay, let's take them back into landing positions. So, kick them back. Try not to kick your settee as I keep doing. Good, now let's do all three together. So we're going to kick forward, kick side, kick back, and then change legs. Kick forward, kick side, kick back. You ready? So kick, kick, and back. Kick, kick, back. Good. Keep that chest up when you're doing your... Good. Good linking, guys. Well done. Okay, well done. Right, grab somewhere, a drink. Have you got a drink? Grab a drink of water. We're going to do some spiral kickbacks to loosen our legs. And then, I think we'll be nice tomorrow. We're feeling a bit warmer now, guys. Yeah, good. That's what we want. Love them. I have Christmas tree sunglasses. Just very seasonal. Okay, grab somewhere to hold on to, whether it's a wall or a piece of furniture. We're going to do spiral kickbacks. We're going to do 10 on each leg. So, in your own time. Well done, guys. Good, so we're working on that range of movement. Good stuff, well done. Good job, guys. Brilliant. Okay, just to get us a little bit warm, we're just gonna do some squats and some walking lunges, and then we're gonna spin. Is that okay? Jen's got her hands up, she's happy. Okay, so let's do 10 normal squats. Remember, hips back, weight in heels, knees over toes, nice and low. In your own time, we're going to do 10. Squeeze at the top.
Good. Well done, guys. Okay, shake them legs off. We're going to do 10 more. This time, we're going to do squat jumps, though. So if you want to add the jump, that's fine. So we're going to go down and jump up and then return back. But if you just want to do the normal squats, up to you. So you work whatever level you want to do. But we're going to do 10 squat jumps in your own time. Well done, guys. Okay. And just to finish, let's just do some walking lunges. Just to keep that movement going, rather than spending time on this last week. We did a lot of these last, um, we did a lot of these last week, so I don't want to spend too much time this week but I still want to keep those movement patterns familiar. Good, okay, shake them legs out. Get a drink, grab your spinner. And we'll crack on. Okay, got your spinner? Fab, let's start with upright spin. Good. Good, Mary, well done. Good step. Good, so just do a normal upright spin now. So the leg, don't cross the leg over, just bring the foot to the knee. But what I want you to concentrate on as well is the exit. I want you to concentrate on the landing position and um, trying to control that as well. So you might have to hop it out, but I want you to think about what the position of the free leg, turned out foot, arm position, head position. Good. So we want to be bending the standing knee as well. So when we when we exit anything, we've got a bent, bent, a bent leg. Excuse my uh, child in the background running through again. So let's think, on the ice, we need, whoa, whoa, Agnes, good save. On the ice, we need a minimum of three revolutions for it to count, uh, two revolutions, but three revolutions for it to count. Yeah, no, three to count as a spin. Two in certain, if you're linking it with other positions, but on its own, it needs to have a minimum of three aiming for more but the minimum of three so that's what we need to aim for on these really and then when we get back on the ice the feeling will still be there and they'll be super super strong and everything will be a breeze okay so that's getting better landings are looking landing positions are looking better let us do cross toe scratch spin whatever you call it um, yes, now. Um, uh, but yes, whatever arm position you do in this, please do. Um, and we're aiming to get our ankles as tight as possible. You'll have to slightly flex the free foot, the one that's not on the ice. You want to squeeze any um, air out in between your legs and squeeze it nice and tightly. Good. So 
So remember when we um remember when we're in um the cross talk, you don't want the foot. This is very similar to when you're rotating, although we are the other way. But when you're in a cross toe, you want to feed that heel down the shin. So there's two ways you can do it. You can either put your heel on like just under your knee and feed it down your shin, or some people pull straight into the ankle. So I was taught feeding it down my shin. But what you don't want to do is this foot move over that way, that way as you're spinning, because it'll knock you off axis, it'll pull you. So you want basically your ankles together. And if it, it feels a bit uncomfortable on the spinner, although you're all, you all seem to be managing it, that was better, Steph. You can just practice it stood still. So it'll practice the balance as well, because I'm still stood on one foot here. And if that feels comfortable now, have a break. If you've done too many spins, don't get too dizzy. Have a drink. We'll try and take the hands above the head. So we'll do the scratch with the arms above the head. Now this again poses a little bit more of a challenge because you've still got to keep yourself nice and strong in your core. Good. So you want your arms to work pretty much if you're moving them in time with your legs. So as the leg pulls in from here, your arms come in. And then as it goes down, the arms move up at the same time. So you're feeding yourself nice and tall. Imagine you've got a ponytail on the top of your head and somebody's pulling it. So remember on the ice, when we step in into this, from your backwards crossovers here, as you step, it's exactly like it would be on your upright spin. This free leg, which is my right leg, has to have that circle round before it pulls in. So it's the same on your spinner, really. It goes around and then pulls straight into the position. So from here, you're going straight in. It's not going upright and then moving because your knee will be doing its own little jig. Good. Well done, guys. All right, have a drink, have a break, and then we're going to go on to backspin. <laughs> I think she just likes being in the video every week, doesn't she? She just appears mid-session, just makes herself at home. Okay, are you ready for backspin, guys? Um, let us do, show me your backspins. Let's see where we are with it, and then we'll take it from there. Super, good. Now, there's two ways you can come out of this on your spinner. You can either... Okay, so backspin, out of your backspin, you can either quickly drop onto the opposite foot and then hop into your landing, or if you are comfortable on your spinner, hop out of it. So hop off your spinner and check your landing position. Either way, once again, concentrate on this landing position. Agnes, don't have a lazy toe at the back. <laughs> um, so make sure it's turned out, arms are up, heads up, looking in the right direction, you know, extended free leg. Good. Super. So again, for these, we're going to aim for like minimum three turns if we can. So for level one test, it's one to two. Is it in level one anymore? No, gold. Gold passport is one. And then the next time it appears, I think is it two to three? brilliant okay take your hands up if you're comfortable with this now let's add a little bit more difficulty into it if you want to don't worry Mary you don't have to 
There's no pressure here. All right, have a drink, guys. Have a break. That was really, really good. They look much better than last time I did, we did them, I think. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to move it on to sit spin. Have we got room for sit spin? No, Agnes? Steph, have you got room? So for those that can, we'll tell you what we'll do. For those that can do sit, let's do it. Yeah. For those that haven't, for those that haven't, let's do, if you can, do you know the upright where we grab the leg that we've done previously? So that one. Yeah. You can, I can't twist that way anymore. So if you want to try that one, you can do. Good stuff. The hard thing with this sit spin, I think, is getting, when you push on this spinner, it seems to be getting the leg from the back to the front. Does that make sense? At the time that you are dropping. So if that's a bit of a struggle, we can do it in isolation where you're holding on to something and we can just work this leg down. Even if it's not all the way down, we can still work that movement here where we're closing and as we close, we're going further down. Now you might be able to get a lot lower than me. I'm a bit rickety now. But even if you wanted to do it standing still off the spinner, good. And don't forget as well, when we enter a sit spin on the ice, we're usually a lot lower in the knee than we are for an upright. So as we step in from our back crossovers, we tend to step going, like descending into the position anyway. So remember this movement. So you don't want to be crouching in. You don't want to be bringing that leg in too. You want to be circling it because that will give you the speed into the spin, that. So as we bring it in, it's not like you're trying to get up onto a horse. You want to keep it like you're karate kicking somebody. <laughs> Well done, guys. Okay, have a break, have a drink. You're, you're doing absolutely fantastic. We're doing so many spins, but I think after last week when we hammered the jumps, I think it's nice to have the opportunity to do some spins as well. So the sit spin is a tricky one. What about back sit? That's better, good. So remember to keep your weight in your toes if you can at all, because that'll help with getting the hips down into the position. Easier said than done, I realize that. I know it's not easy on these spinners at all. Well done, guys. Have a drink when you need one, guys. Don't just, you know, spin yourself super dizzy. Good. So I would say from the very first time we tried spins on here, these spins are looking so much better. Definitely think they've got like stronger and definitely think they're improving. Okay, so let's try camels. And then we're also going to do some eyes and Y type positions as well. And we're going to do illusions as well today, um, which Jen seems to be happy about. Um, 
But let's start with camel. Just then we've covered the, the three basic spin positions. If you can't, if you've not got the room, that's fine. Um, go back to an upright or even a camel catch. But let's, if you can do it. So Agnes, start with your body down with your tummy button facing the floor. Because when you step into a camel on the ice, you step into it with your body already down. Yeah. And then see how your leg feels lifting yes. work on your spiral position because that'll only strengthen it for when we do put camel onto the ice so you can you know like hold here and then just lift and balance unlike me today because i can't seem to balance um and just work on position and do both legs as well because then you cover it yeah both sides Super. Sometimes it looks like you push and because you're whipping your leg around, your leg starts to move past where your body position is, if that makes sense. Good. Do you, should we try a catch foot if you want to? You don't have to. Should we try a catch foot? No, it's up to you. You can either do same hand to foot. Yeah, see what it goes like. Just try. That's it. Or let's just start introducing it, bringing the leg. Now we can do same hand to foot. You can do opposite hand to foot. Yes, Mary. Good. It's hard not having the blade to grab, if that makes sense. Because um, your position has to stretch ever so slightly further, but it does feel like a, a lot of a, a lot bigger stretch. Somebody needs to invent like a pretend blade to attach onto your um, trainers so that when we do things like this, it's a lot easier to grab the foot. Well done. So again, if you, I think everybody's pretty much all right for room at the minute. But if you're struggling, let's you can do it on the spot, as we have been doing. Good. Does anybody do this spin on the ice? It's not a bad thing to be practicing them off the ice now, just to introduce the the feel of the positions and everything. I know it'll feel different on the ice. The spinner will feel slightly different. Good. Okay, do a couple more and then we'll move on. Yeah. Okay, let's do Y's. So the Y frame can either be on the front leg or the back leg. Pick your stronger leg. Pick what you're most comfortable with. Uh, yeah, do it, do it stationary if, if we need to practice the stretch first. So you can do it standing still on whatever leg you choose. Work the position, hold it. So we have the, there's a few options we can do here. We have the Y where it goes to the side. We have the one which is the opposite hand to foot across the front, or we have the I position where we hold with both hands. So the options and choices are yours. If you wanna try all three, if you wanna just stick with your favorite, that's fine. So I do mine on the back leg because that's what I'm comfortable on.
I find it easier to grab if I'm slightly lower down in the standing knee. Does that make sense? So as I bring the leg around, I'm further down. So I, I, I seem to be able to catch hold of my foot a little bit easier, whether it's I, Y or upside down spinners, I would probably do if I tried it on the ice. Good. I've just clocked the time. We've done a lot of spins today. Good. Okay, have a drink. Relax. Well done, guys. Okay, should we do the illusion? Should we try the illusion? Okay, so remember, we talked through this. Now, bearing in mind, I can't demonstrate very well because uh, my flexibility has gone for a walk. Um, it is, I stand on my left leg, my right leg will be in the air and my right arm will come down towards the left toe to give that seesaw movement. Yes, Jen. So you can do it on your, on your spinner if you wish, or you can do it standing still where you can take both, just to start with, have both arms in front and just work that leg up like a spiral kick back, but which is moving slightly. Or you can do it where you drop one hand down to the toe. So it'd be as you go into your spin and you turn from forwards to backwards at that point is when the illusion would happen. And um, hopefully your leg goes a lot higher than mine. So it's getting the time in between the leg going up, the body going down and working that together. Now I have done this on the ice. It does feel a lot easier for me on the ice than it does on here. And remember when you're doing that dip, your weight is towards your toe. Um, there, yeah. Good. So even though you're looking down, try and keep the alignment in the back to the head, like the spine, all one. Because at the minute it looks like you're tucking your head under and it makes you like drop a little bit. Now this is nice in a step sequence as a highlight or into a spin. So you could do this entry into a spin and then do like an upright after it if you're feeling super adventurous. One of my skaters does this into sit spin. Um, it's really nice when it's done well. Um, she does it a lot better than I can do it. Um, and I think you'll see a lot of like world-class skaters, they do it into like their laybacks, you know, when they need to up the levels on the layback um, and the Beelman position, a lot of them do it. But it's nice in a step sequence as a highlight as well on a piece of music. So although it's we're doing spins today and we're classing this as a bit of a spin thing, it's nice to do elsewhere. So you can also do it on the back foot. Jen, can you do it on the back foot? I've never tried it on the back foot, on the ice. Um, so it would be, I would be stood on my right. I always have to think. And my left leg would go in the air and it'd be the opposite way. Um, has anybody else tried it on the back foot? No, I don't think I'm flexible enough to do it on the back foot. I feel a lot more comfortable on my other one. So you'd kick it up and the body would sweep down. So it'd go back first, straight back and you'd go down. Yeah. But we could, we could link one and then the other one. Yeah, you could link them together as well off the spinner. 
So as Agnes did there, Agnes, do that again. So do one leg, and then as soon as the other leg comes down, take the other leg up. Other leg up now, there. So Agnes, I think, is doing from what I can gather. She's going to do one leg here, and then the other leg. Now do that off your spinner, and then your other leg. Good, good, well done. Okay, right, we've got like a few minutes left. Should we do some stretching? Should we do some stretching to finish? Should we get the mats out? Let's get your mats, I'll get mine out, I will move. Let's move us. Well done with that, guys. You've done a lot of spins there, but really good work. Okay. So let's just stretch the arms out and put your forehead on the mat and just sit there and take some big breaths. Hold it there. Nice and chill. Then place one hand under and just feel the twist in the back. And then the other way. Bring it forward and push your hips into the mat. And reverse. Just hold it there. And bring it forward. Reverse this time, widen the knees and let your chest drop towards the mat. You'll feel the stretch a little bit more. Just hold it there. Good. Onto your hands and knees, we're going to drop the tummy to the mat and lift the chin up. And then round into the chest. And then drop. And round. Good. Good. Up on your toes if you can. And just push those heels into the mat. Just feel that stretch. And then drop your chest towards your legs so you feel a bit more stretch at them. Calves, let me take my glasses off. Good. Down on your knees. We'll take one foot forwards and feel the stretch. Good. So your weight is coming forward so you're feeling the stretch up your thighs. Now, if you want to make that a little bit deeper, place both hands onto the inside of the um, front leg. Okay, now from here, we're gonna take your hand and we're gonna open up to the side. So we're twisting outwards. Good, well done. And then put your hand on your knee and gently push it out a little bit. So you'll rock onto the outside of your foot, gently push that knee out if you can. Good, bring it back, extend the leg. And down, feel the stretch on the back of the leg. Good guys, let's change. Feel your stretch. Place both hands down on the inside. If you're comfortable, open up. Good, gently push that knee out. And then reverse. Good, let's do butterfly stretch. Good. 
good. Hold if you got need to hold on to it like I do. I hold on to my ankles. I use my elbows to push my knees down. Agnes is like super flexible at this. I'm definitely not, as you can see. And just hold it there. If you want to sit with your back against a wall so you keep your back straight, that's fine. As you can tell with mine, this one is easier than this one. So I have a real issue with my right hip and there's a bit of a discrepancy between the both of mine. Good, then straighten one leg. And if you can, bend forward. If not, just hold it where it's comfortable. Good guys. Good, and then switch. And go forward. Good, and then into V. And then over. And the other side. Good. And then into the middle. Hold. Good. And then nose to knee. So we're laying along the leg this time. And the other way, nose to knee. And then hold it into the middle. Good. Shake your legs out, guys. Oh, let's just do the arms. Move the arms across just to finish. And the other one. Good. Shake out. Well done, guys. 